And joining me now is Chris Jackson. He's vice president of Ipsos, a global market research and consulting firm. So it's got everyone around the world sh sh you know, just wondering what's going on. What is behind this populist and nationalist wave? You've seen it from country mm -hmm. to country, from election to referendum to election. That's right. Yeah, and, and populism it's always existed. This is not a new phenomenon. It's been around as long as democracy has been around, probably before that. Um, and it's sort of, it's fueled by the confluence of three things, economic change, social change, and elites that are seen to be out of touch. And we're sort of at a point right now where that's happening across particularly Western uh, Europe and the United States where the, those three factors are really coming together, coming to a head with the Brexit vote, with Donald Trump's election, with the, the recent referenda in Italy. Uh, all of those are sort of symbols, symptoms rather, of the same thing. And you said it's, it comes and goes, but have we ever seen a, a wave or a movement where we've seen it across the world happening at the same time? Uh, you know, this is, this is notable in sort of the way it seems to be happening all around the world all at the same time. Uh, we have seen, though, in the past similar sort of waves where there seems to be revolutions or uh, uproar sort of at the same time around the world. You saw it in the 20s sort of after the Great Depression. You saw it in the mid 1800s uh, when some of the earliest sort of democratization movements were happening. So it's not wholly unique, but this time is certainly a different flavor. Why does it seem that uh, no one has had, you know, the heartbeat of what was going mm -hmm. on? We, we been talking about polls, polling. Mm -hmm. uh, it seems that they've all, in every case, um, Brexit, the referendum in Colombia, here in the United mm -hmm. States, it's all been way off. Right. Well, it's not all been way off. In the United States, polling was only off a couple of percentage points. The challenge has been that elections are oftentimes decided by a percentage point or two. So we say 51, it's actually 49. That's enough to make a difference. Um, and it's actually sometimes quite challenging. Uh, the real, I think, story is that about how divided the public is. You know, the people are actually really evenly split between sort of the sides of, of in the United States, sort of this pro-Trump populist sort of side, and then the Clinton more establishment, people who sort of are benefiting more from globalization and modernity. What about the impact populism is having on blocks? Uh, we just were seeing what was happening in the EU calling mm -hmm. for unity. There are other elections taking place, That's France, right. Germany coming up, uh, the Netherlands. What kind of impact is this having? Are, are they worried? Should they be worried? Uh, they, they should. I mean, populism, as I mentioned, is, a, is economic driven. And it's right now being driven by globalization as much as anything. And globalization is not really the kind of thing you can shut out. Um, but with governments, especially sort of supranational governments like the EU, struggling to adapt to the needs of their people, it's really challenging for them to, one, shut out globalization, but two, be responsive to their people at the same time. What are you thinking as far as waves? Um, here in the United States, I guess I could ask, do we see it in election cycles? Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we're looking at something new here, as you mentioned, with the coincidence of all these uh, elections happening at the same time. Is this the new normal for a while? Uh, yeah, I think we're really entering a cycle where, at least for the next couple of years, we're going to see a lot of this tumult happening uh, around the world. You know, we're expecting the next French election next year to be really uh, contested between sort of the, the far right sort of sort of populists and the more centrist parties. And you'll probably see it play out across Europe. You see it uh, playing out in Latin America. It's happening all over the place. What do you want uh, people to know out there uh, who are still scratching their heads? Well, I, I think the important thing to keep in mind isn't necessarily that, like in the United States, uh, it wasn't necessarily that the majority of people are in favor of Donald Trump. It's that the minority of people who are in favor of Donald Trump are much more enthusiastic. And it's the exact same thing you saw at the Brexit referendum. It's a minority of people who are in favor of Brexit showed up to vote. And the majority of people aren't as enthusiastic about it. So it's sort of the problem has been no one has been making the case for globalization. Nobody's been making the chase case for trade. Uh, and that's really been the problem, I think, with this new populism is, is there, it's an easy case on the one side and it's a hard case on the other. All right. Chris Jackson, we'll leave it there. Thank you so much for your insight. Uh, really eye-opening. Thank you so much. Thank you.